Okay, thanks, Andy, uh, Randy, uh, for a nice introduction. Um, my name is Hyung Jun Kim, also known as YJ, and I'm the chief of the analysis and analysis branch of the AFS office. And here you see Eric Gillard, uh, a staff member, who will Hi. present the results. And with us here, Mark Chu, my supervisor, the division chief, and uh, another staff member, Tatiana Gonzalez. Next slide. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, we have the code of AFS 11 on it to designate the analysis and outcast branch located at the National Weather Service headquarters in Silver Spring, Maryland. And one of our primary missions is to find out what uh, your needs are, I mean, the field's needs regarding analysis and short term forecast models. So, basically, we take your feedback and use it to develop, develop requirements, operational requirement, requirements, and pass them to the developers and GSL and EMC, et cetera. And there are three of us here, uh, not yet, myself and Eric Gillot, formerly from Office of Ops, and Tatiana Gonzalez, uh, formerly from MDL. Next, now, next slide. <clears throat> So why are we doing this? In fact, we have a we have an FI training milestone entitled "Draft Requirements Developed Through Survey and Gap Analysis of the Field's Needs for 3D Mesoscale Scale Analysis," which is 3D Altamir Irma. And this survey is basically for version 2.7, although we have some selected selected cases from version 2.8 uh, that became operational in last July. The next version will come out. Uh, quite a few years after, I mean, later in 2023, but our fellow developers at EMC uh, want to know what the needs are to prepare for their uh, upgrade. And we sent out um, requirements in, uh, through a very general form of cards, but this time we are making some specific field requirements to um, directly help them to develop uh, solutions. And from the next slide, Eric will take over and I'll be back near the end of the talk. Okay, Eric, take it away. Thank you, YJ. Um, so um, I'm going to keep this pretty informal. If you have any questions, please just interrupt me. Um, I can't see all of you, obviously, but uh, like I said, just interrupt me. Let's, uh, let's answer those questions as soon as we can. So really quick, let's just start off with an overview of what is our teammate Irma, just in case you're not familiar with it, though I, I suspect most of you are. Uh, our team a real-time mesoscale analysis, IRMA, unrestricted mesoscale analysis. Basically, uh, it takes a blend of the NAM nest and the HER one-hour forecast and takes that as the first guess uh, field. Uh, then it takes uh, surface observations, uh, stage four radar data, CMORF and MRMS, and also satellite imagery and wave height. QCs all that, puts it all together. It kind of gives you an idea of the, the best uh, estimate of the current state of the atmosphere. And then IRMA runs six hours later than RTMA to utilize any late arriving observations in case those uh, observations were not available when RTMA was running. Um, so at the bottom there, you know, why, why is RTMA and IRMA important as a forecaster? RTMA is important because you can use it to initialize your NDFP grids. I know Eastern Region does that um, several times a day. Um, IRMA is important because it is the analysis of record for NWS. It's also important, as um, uh, Randy was saying earlier, because it's uh, used to bias correct the MBM, which presents a problem if, if, if Irma's off, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, so like YJ said, we did this survey um, back in May, uh, closed at the beginning of June. Uh, we had 172 responses. Uh, you can see most of them were from forecasters, which we very much appreciate. And actually, Central Region, you guys are the winner. 31% um, of you uh, said that, uh, were the ones that responded here, which we very much appreciate uh, your, your feedback. And actually, in terms of WFO numbers, uh, Boulder and uh, Grand Junction were, were, were the top, some of the top uh, participants. So we appreciate that. Um, so the way this presentation is organized is we start with conclusions. Uh, from there, we'll go into the survey question from which we drew that conclusion from. And again, just interrupt me anytime as, as we go through this. There's going to be a lot of information thrown at you. Um, so some of our very first conclusions, the majority of forecasters are willing to accept our teammate IRMA data that is different from observations in that grid box, as long as that difference is not large. And also the number of forecasters that expect our teammate IRMA to exactly match the observations in that grid box is not high. So we asked that very question, you know, um, our teammate IRMA is an objective analysis 
that's at the resolution of NDF degree two, two and a half kilometer. Uh, because of this, the gridded value shouldn't necessarily match the point-based surface OBS exactly, but it shouldn't be really far off either, right? There should be some type of, uh, you know, sweet spot, if you will. And so we asked the very question, you know, what is your threshold tolerance as a forecaster for these various uh, fields um, a different, uh, in grid boxes with an actual surface observation? We asked it about temperature, uh, dew point, wind speed, QPF, and significant wave height. And we also threw in the sensor accuracy in that, in that uh, question in order for the forecaster to, to kind of have that in the back of their mind as well. And so here are the results. There's a lot on this page. Um, what we did here is uh, the top left is temperature tolerances. And you can see um, these are the, the options that the, that the uh, people who took the survey had, you know, one to two degrees Fahrenheit, two to three degrees Fahrenheit. The all column is everyone who took the survey, all 172 responses. And then obviously this, the CR column is the central region column just from your specific region. And we can see pretty much agreement for the temperature tolerances in terms of everyone versus central region. You know, just about anywhere between one and three degrees Fahrenheit is considered acceptable as, as a forecaster. On the bottom left there, uh, dew point tolerances, uh, similar, similar numbers, kind of close, uh, between one and three degrees uh, for dew point as well. Uh, right in the middle, two QPE tolerances, um, pretty low, 0.01 to 0.1, and that's pretty much the story everywhere. Um, you know, QPF obviously is very important to get uh, very close, so that makes sense there. Uh, the top right wind tolerances uh, anywhere between one and five knots pretty much even split for all and central region and also uh, bottom right wave height tolerance obviously na is the number one answer but those of you that do do wave, wave heights in uh, in the great lakes um, one to three feet uh, with most people saying actually uh, they prefer closer to one which makes sense because that's what's driving a lot of these products that are, that are being created any questions on this one i want to take a pause here this was a lot We can always come back if you think of something later. Let's keep going. Yeah. Oh. Let's see you Pardon me? Uh, no questions seen. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, uh, next conclusion. Uh, forecasters are most dissatisfied with the winds. They're, being, they're too low, followed the next by the minimum temperature being too high, and aviation parameters, sky cover, ceiling, and visibility not being realistic. So we asked that very question, you know, which of the following RTMA parameters do not perform adequately for ops? And this was multiple answers. You could select as many as you wanted. Uh, wind gust and wind speed were number one answers, both with everyone and with central region. Um, minimum temperature, central region had a problem with that as well, 40%. Uh, QPF was higher than, than, than all a little bit at 36%. You can see a lot of these in here, sky cover, ceiling visibility, you know, hourly temp, max temp. You know, pretty much there's, there's issues with, with, with most of these and, and, and we're well aware of those. Um, those of you said other, a lot of answers, just, I'm not sure. Um, then we asked the follow-up question, and we said, based on those choices, please explain how the parameters you specified don't perform adequately. So this was kind of an open-ended question, could write whatever you wanted. Um, these, these results are not central region specific. This is from everybody, but, but it's still kind of, it still carries over in terms of what uh, people were saying. With the wind speed, again, the winds being too low, with the temperature, it's, it's mostly bad and in ridges and valleys, it makes sense. Complex terrain is an issue, which we'll talk about a little bit. And also sky covered, you know, not representing reality. Uh, the next conclusion, uh, forecasters see RTMA IRMA issues mostly in complex terrain, specifically capturing cold pools, wind events, and rainfall, and some see issues with wind events even in flat terrain. Uh, so we, so we, you know, there was a, there was a uh, VLAB forum on RTMA IRMA, and we went through all of that before we even uh, presented this, or, or thought about doing the survey to see, you know, what are forecasters saying, and it, and it, and it showed that, you know, a lot of people are saying they're not, uh, specific phenomena are not real, ca real captured in RTMA IRMA. And the question was, what are those phenomena that RTMA is having difficulty with? So the number one answer, cold pools and complex terrain, uh, both for everyone in the central region, um, that's, that's pretty well, well documented. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, what we can do about it. Um, high wind events and complex terrain, precip and complex terrain, even high wind events in, in flat terrain. And you're all seeing issues with, with the winds, with the precip, and with cold pools. And, um, you know, th that's definitely going to feed into the requirements that will be uh, presented or be uh, given to, to EMC um, coming up in the, in, um, this fall. Um, there was a follow uh, The next question, well, let me take a pause here because the next one gets into quality control. I want to make sure that there's no questions before we keep going since we have a little bit of time. Hearing nothing. Okay. Now we're going to talk about uh, more uh, functionality things and, and uh, things that with the system itself. And there's, there's going to be a lot here, so I'll, so I'll go through them pretty quickly. Uh, forecasters have issues with our team at Irma quality control, specifically with good OBS being rejected by the system and bad OBS being assimilated into the system. 
So we asked that very question, what technical problems are you seeing with our teammate Irma? And number one answer was quality control, just, just as we said. And then we asked the follow-up to say, please explain your choices, what changes need to be made to our teammate Irma? And good ops being thrown out, bad observations making it in, and QC and complex terrain, those are all the, the, uh, the top answers that make sense based on what we've, what we've been talking about. Uh, the next conclusion is the forecast is one observation is to have more weight in driving the RTMA IRM analysis field, including different data sources having more or less weight than others. Uh, so again, ask that very question, 47% of central regions said that this is an issue. The station data is not modifying the background field enough. Remember, the background field is the first guess and the station data kind of molds it to what's actually going on. Um, you can see in the center there, uh, greater OBS weighting. Um, again, 21% said that. Uh, also station type weighting. What that means is maybe an ASOS station that costs a lot of money and is very accurate is weighted a little bit more than say someone's weather flow station on their roof. Uh, forecasters want our teammate Irma background field to be improved, especially in complex terrain. So we were just talking about that. Remember the background is a blend of the her and the NAM nest. You know, if that's, if that's really far off, you know, the, the, the observations can only tweak it so much, right? It's only gonna bring it towards ob so much. It's not going to just yank it right to ob. It's, there should be some sweet spot there, but it can't be way off either. Otherwise you're gonna get close. And the bottom right there, again, um, need better background feel. Almost 40% of people just said, you know, again, and, and they could say anything in this open-ended question. So the fact that 40% of people did say that this is an issue is significant. Uh, forecasters want more data to be assimilated into our teammate Irma, including additional surface observations and relevant satellite data. So again, 40% uh, of you in central region said that lack of data is, is an issue. Remember, not all mesonets are, are assimilated into this. Not much satellite data is being assimilated into this. Um, and then again, with the follow-up question, what, um, please explain, um, top right there, lack of data, 25% um, of people said that that's an issue. And then lastly, about these functionality system questions, uh, forecasters want it to be easier to blacklist observations, including allowing some parameters of the observation to be assimilated while others are not. Um, so you can see the bottom there, uh, uh, functionality, ability to specify which data is used and used in the analysis. 34% um, of you in central regions said that uh, is an issue. And the bottom left there, specifically the blacklisting stations, what was an issue. And that was just a little bit surprising to us because we thought that the, the process was, was, was straightforward uh, that EMC has requested in terms of filling out the form. But the issue is that, you know, it only, seems to be only limited things that can actually fill out the form. Sometimes they're out. Um, and it's also on, you know, on or off all the time. And it's, and it's not, you know, different weather situations. Um, actually, sometimes the, the, the data is uh, being ingested. Sometimes it's not. And that is an issue. I'll take a pause here because from here we start switching into questions about the future 3D R team A Irma. So I'll, I'll take a pause and see if there's any questions before we move on. Yeah, any questions on what Eric's touched on this to this point? Uh, please raise your hand or type it into the questions pane. Uh, one thing I'll just make a comment on that you um, mentioned, Eric, about people being willing to accept the Irma being a little different than the observations, but not too different, right? Um, that's that's a change, you know, that's kind of evolved over the years because that was a, a real point of contention, say, five or six years ago about how you could have an IRMA point that was different than a, a good observation site. So that was that was a very interesting um, finding. I, I was curious if you could touch a little bit on the OBS weighting issue because I think an MBM 4.0 that went out, or a, the version of MBM that went out yesterday, um, it became operational yesterday, the, the weighting is a little different. Right, it's taking it's it's taking more. The or the Irma is the weighting on the on the like the AWOSs and ASOSs. That weighting has changed, right? Uh, Raj, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think they're talking. Randy's talking about the uh, the fact that the observation is being is used as the bias correction now. Is that right? Yeah, if, if I may um, uh, add. So what matters is the quality of uh, observations. So we traditionally rely more on ASOS data, but there are tons of data from the Mesonet, various types of Mesonet network that people wish to use, but some of them have real, I mean, some of them are really bad in quality. So we need to find out how to kind of sort out garbage from the signal. And that's uh, the core of the problem. People want to have more good observations, but how good they should be and how do we know? And we are touching on those through our requirements. And we're gonna show a couple of slides later to touch on that a, a little bit more, so. 
Great, thank you. Uh, no other uh, questions seen at this time, Eric. Okay, we can always come back. You know, we'll, we can come back any slides if we have to later. Um, so now, like I said, we started asking about 3D RTMA IRMA specifically because this is really going to be, you know, it's, it's adding another dimension to the data that everyone's used to seeing. So it's really going to it's going to be a game changer in a lot of ways, and we'll touch upon that. Um, so forecasters are excited about the 3D RTMA data, especially parameters related to severe weather, aviation, and fire weather and also vertical information, profiles, freezing levels, also uh, much wanted parameters. Um, forecasters use this 3D data primarily for situation awareness and mesoanalysis. So we asked the question, you know, what parameters are you, will most help you in operations? And obviously, obviously you can't just ask specific parameters. It'd be, you know, hundreds of these. You can't ask specific. So we, we categorized them into, uh, you know, types, types of uh, mission service areas and severe weather, aviation weather, fire weather. You know, all these are wanted, you know, central regions right up there with everybody else, vertical temperature and moisture profiles, freezing level height. Um, these are all parameters that are, that are going to be heavily, heavily used by the forecasters once, uh, once this is released. Um, then we asked the follow on, you know, please explain how the parameters you specified will assist you in operations. Um, situational awareness obviously is the number one answer across the board. You know, that's, that's really where, where things are going to, you know, what, what forecasters are going to be able to use this data for. Um, I want to call attention to the top left there, severe weather uh, used in mesoanalysis. So, I think something um, that's going to be more of a game changer here is traditionally our team IRMA data has been been used mostly in, in GFB, right? Well, with, with 3D our team IRMA, you know, suddenly you're going to have these derived parameters, much like derived parameters you'll see on, say, SPC's mesoanalysis website. Um, and these are going to be, you know, you know, if you look at these in ALIP, suddenly you're looking at them in D2D now, right? And you're able to do an actual mesoanalysis in, in D2D and not having to use an external website. So I think that this is, and forecasters were clearly picking up on that, that 20% of them said, you know, this is going to be really a game changer and, and how this is going to assist in, in operations. Um, so, for, so then we started asking about, you know, uh, data refresh rates and latency and spe spatial resolution and the, and, and those types of things. So forecasters are okay with receiving RTMA IRMA data hourly if they're using it to create their NDFD grids. However, they want it more often, every 15 to 30 minutes, for if they're using it to, to do a mesoanalysis like we just touched upon. So we asked the question, you know, obviously it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, you're gonna use this data to do your NDFD grids. How often do you, do you need it? And uh, most people uh, said every hour for everybody. However, Central Region was a little bit more split. Um, every hour, uh, how about, if about 40% of you, 38% of you said every hour, 41% um, of you said every 30 minutes. So maybe Central Region does want, you know, want it a little bit more often, um, even if they're using it to make their NDFD grids, which we understand. But then if we say, okay, what if you're using it to make do a mesoanalysis, then the, 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 the answer is more clear here, where at least every 30 minutes, and 25% of you said every 15 minutes, which is, which is uh, similar to what everybody said. So obviously, much rapidly changing weather condition, you want uh, the refresh rate to be more often. Um, then we asked about data latency. Regardless of usage, forecasters want the data latency to decrease to between 15 to 30 minutes. So by data latency, what do we mean? We mean the time it takes the product to be created and distributed to your office. Right now it's about an hour, a little bit more than that, hour five sometimes. Um, when you're using it to create your NDFDA grids, 30 minutes is really uh, what everyone's looking for. In fact, some Central Region even said uh, 15 minutes along with everybody. So basically the story is faster than what it is now of every hour. It needs to be faster. Now, if we're using it to create our, our to do a mesoanalysis, definitely needs to be faster. 45% of Central Region said at least every 15 minutes. Again, much faster than, than the one hour current latency that's going on right now. Um, then we asked about um, uh, spatial resolution. So we asked, okay, what, what resolution um, do you need RTMA IRMA to be for if you're doing an NDFD grid versus if you're doing a mesoanalysis? So, Forecasters want it to be the same resolution as the NDFD grid when using it to create those grids. However, there's a more of an even split between that resolution, two and a half kilometer, and one kilometer resolution data when using it for a mesoanalysis. So again, we asked that question, and 64% of you in Central Region said match it to the NDFD grid. Most of the responses for that were, well, it's you know it's apples to apples. It's just it's just easier to understand. Although a quarter of you did say one kilometer, and that's that's pretty much in line with everybody else. And people said no, we still want it at that higher resolution. And then for a mesoanalysis, it's a little bit more unclear, as I alluded to earlier. 38% of you said one kilometer for sure. 51% of you said, well, two and a half kilometers is still okay, even if you're doing it for a mesoanalysis. We don't want to get too, too fine in the details. So this is, so that's um, right in line with what uh, the rest of the uh, regions were saying. 
Uh, this is the last uh, conclusion slide. Basically, the final question on the survey was, tell us anything else you want us to know about our team A and Irma. So that they could ask about anything. And there was actually some consensus. I kind of expected it to be all over the place, but there was some consensus. Some people were uh, in agreement here that uh, they want a larger domains, including adding places like American Samoa, expanding it to Canada to see what's coming, um, and larger resolution domains over oceans. Um, Irma, contaminated by bad quality data, to bias correct the MBM is causing forecasts to rely less on MBM. This is this was alluded to by Randy earlier, and this is a big problem. Um, this is something that, that definitely needs to be addressed. And again, forecasters are, are looking forward to the 3D RTMA data in, uh, in AWIPS to use the same way as the SBC meso-analysis website. Um, hey, Eric, so yes. Yeah, I just want to let you know there's a pretty good lag on our end um, on the slide advancing. Okay. So, so we're seeing the slide advance maybe 15 seconds after it looks like you advance it, just, just so for your awareness. Got it. Okay. Thanks for telling me. Yep. Okay. I just switched the slide, so it'll take, it'll take a second, but this is the, our concluding remarks slide. I just wanted to say thank you for taking our survey, all of you. We know your time is, is valuable and, um, you know, we do appreciate you, you, you giving us some feedback, you know, so we can use your feedback in order to inform you and see that, you know, this is what, uh, you know, the forecasters really need for this next iteration of our team at Irma that's coming out in a couple of years here. And with that, I'll throw it back to YJ. Okay, so uh, now everybody is seeing the concluding remark slide. I mean, Eric, you went back to the previous one. Uh, no, I'm on a concluding remark still. Uh, I'm seeing survey conclusions um, for uh, 16 and 18. <laughs> So, yeah, the delay is significant. Wow, just, um, wow, this is more than a few seconds. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so um, we rely on the VLA forum on Altim Irma a lot, and we used data we analyzed out of the forum to develop questions and also uh, design our surveys. And we are performing a gap analysis um, based on this and all the information we collected. And Eric, click gap analysis slide link. Is this loading quickly or is this lagged as well, RJ? <laughs> that looks better, uh, Eric. I see it, I see it. Okay, okay. so yeah, this yeah. is an example of slide that, sh that shows what kind of <clears throat> processes we are <clears throat> chasing because a lot of um, data shows that it's got to be something happening over complex terrain. So we need to um, make sure um, those algorithms, whether it's model physics, downscaling, error estimation, quality control, including blacklisting and whitelisting uh, of data. We want to make sure that make sure that these algorithms understand what's going on here over complex terrain and kind of represent it in, for example, selecting the best uh, ops possible. And our uh, current conclusion is it's not the case. And those algorithms are not based on a lot of physics, but based on some engineering and um, some flow dynamics ideas. So we are working on to kind of let the developers know that it's got to be physics based. And uh, Eric, if you stay with that uh, <clears throat> slide deck and go up by two, just to answer a question that uh, occurred earlier. <clears throat> yeah, that one. <clears throat> Excuse me. That is uh, basically RTMS2 good enough list that came out a few years ago. And there are suggestions. And item number three, the second column, I mean, um, second quality control column talks about weighting. The recommendation was to weight more strongly where uh, there's not much terrain variation and weight less where those subgrid scale terrain variability is high. I know why this was suggested because there are a lot of um, difficulties over complex terrain. 
However, it should be the other way around. We have to, we need more data over complex terrain because those are uh, problem areas. So we are our requirements will directly tackle this. We need more ops and wait more over ops over complex terrain. But the issue is, of course, the quality of data um, either is not um, measured right or models have trouble understanding what's happening, all sorts of things. So this is a huge problem, but it should be addressed to come up with the best possible uh, analysis field. So back to um, main slide deck. Um, in fact, I sorry, uh, go back to the second slide deck and go to slide 16. So this is what we do. Um, yeah, that one. We are working on writing requirements for Altima Irma, but a lot of errors come from upstream systems such as her name and a bunch of different uh, observation data sets. So we need to also understand how the error biases are generated in the upstream system. So that means for the forecast models, we need to come up with better physics or downscaling, again, to um, make sure that those algorithms understand what's going on, for example, over complex terrain. And regarding ops, we need to know how to, again, sort out garbage from the signal. And that means better quality control, physics-based quality control, and error estimation in terms of like background error covariance specified for the data assimilation system of those NWP models. So we are trying to uh, have a big picture following a holistic approach to address the needs. And all these will contribute to, to the improved NBM. Just coming with a better way of blending parameters wouldn't be good. And if I just hint uh, briefly, our NBM is relying more and more on foreign data. So that's a problem. Although we are improving NBM, we, our domestic models may not be improving as much. And that's another problem. But here we are trying to kind of balance these two, provide uh, accurate verification data from RTML Irma so that the NBM performs nicely with all those blending parameters. So back to the main slide deck. So that's what we are doing. And we have a draft uh, requirements. Uh, next slide. Uh, yeah, before that, uh, actually, uh, we grabbed one case <clears throat> uh, posted to the Villa Forum by a forecaster in Central Region. I don't know if um, this person is with us uh, in this call, but basically, this talks about uh, warm bias of RTM Irma that occurred December last year in the Rio Grande Valley area. So there is E8706 uh, station, which is a CWAP station. And what we can see out of this um, report is there is a cold pool generated by Valley Effect, which is not picked up by Altium Irma. And next slide. And we check nearby stations in the Rio Grande Valley area, E8706 on the left, and there's a ASA station on the right, KLCB. R is kind of far, and it doesn't represent the physics and dynamics going on um, uh, in near E8706. So um, as you can see from the next slide, uh, <clears throat> that's not very helpful to understand the report. So on the uh, upper left, we have three curves from 8706, a CF station. Or I mean, red is the background, model background, which is her and her basically. And E8706 CF uh, station data is colored in yellow. And Irma is in the middle, the blue one. So you can see that Although um, 
there was an E706 C up data. Irma probably didn't take advantage of it in this version. And background has at least actually shows much overestimated temperature. The bottom line is this cold pool was not captured by Irma. It may uh, be better represented in the newer version, which we are planning to track, but we see this in a lot of cases. The Irma fails to pick up this cold pool. And on the right, SRGC2 is a nearby station. If you go back by one slide, Eric, quickly. <clears throat> and it's uh, in the middle. SRGC2 and go back to the next slide. And there's a kind of Mesonet data. And for this particular location, it wasn't that bad. The Irma uh, kind of picked up that uh, cold pool and represented the situation better. But although the background is entirely different, the so model is having trouble. And that's a source of um, error for Altium Irma, as I pointed out earlier. And the below is the ASO station KLCV, but there's again kind of far from the in fact um, interested area. So we're just uh, showing it as a reference. If Irma use only ASO stations, then it will have trouble. But for some reason, it did a good job. The thing is, um, this kind of flows of a complex terrain is highly nonlinear, inhomogeneous, transient, and anisotropic. So we really need to make sure that to address concerns of a lot of different forecasters and people, we need to make sure that these models represent, understand, represent this kind of physical phenomena correctly. Okay, uh, back to the main slide there. And that's about it. And uh, Eric is uh, going to go over our VLAB page for news, uh, our news. Yeah, so we have a, uh, a VLAB page called AFS1 Announcements and Updates. AFS1 is the division um, at AFS that uh, AFS11 is, is located in. And this VLAB page, uh, you know, we started it for mostly, you know, for all of you, basically, to, to, to be aware of what's going on exactly with, 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 the, with the branch and with the, with the division. So this is what the page looks like. It's open to everybody. If you click on that link, it'll ask you to join. It's anyone with a NOAA email can, can, can join it. And basically, you know, this is, this is the... the the breakdown here you can see down here on the left are three branches in AFS1. If you click on analysis and now cast branch it'll take you to our branches page and these are all the updates um, the things that we've been working on you know right here along the top here. Uh, one, of, one of the more recent ones that you all might be interested in you've probably already seen this because it didn't go out um, through the regions is um, when our teammate Irma version 2.8 was released uh, we, we co-wrote a newsletter with EMC um, and you can see that newsletter here basically to say, you know, as a forecaster, you know, what do I need to know about the new release? What changes have been made? And it goes into that a little bit. There's been some background field improvements, some wind enhancements, significant wave light enhancements, uh, moisture dew point analysis enhancements, sky cover enhancements. So they, they pretty much tried to improve as many things as they could in this, in this latest version. And, you know, what do I have to do to receive this in my office? Who do I contact? They have questions about our team Irma. And then what's next on the horizon for our team Irma? Um, and again, we, we, we appreciate EMC um, for, for co-writing that with us. Um, but these are the types of things you can, you'll find this page. Um, you'll see another one of these newsletters go out um, when the new versions of the HER and the RAP come out uh, near the end of this year. Um, highly encourage everyone to please join this page and, and you can see what we're up to. We post the survey analysis on here, you know, the results of our surveys, um, pre these presentations will be on there. Um, so yes, please um, join this if you can. And um, yeah, thanks again for everything.